Please welcome Mr. Jesper Scherbrink. So Jesper, you were one of the speakers at Nordic E-commerce Summit in 2013. Yes. And when I ask attendees from that year uh, what they were most inspired by, they often talk about you. Mm. So can you guess what you inspired them to do? No. Can you have a guess? Um, hopefully I inspired them to look more closely on their business from a commercial side and perhaps being more straightforward and, and uh, go direct to the target leaders, hopefully. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, could have been my choice. Delegate and hire a, an assistant. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, sure. so when you first got the offer from Eurofleece, you turned it down at first. Uh, can you tell us about the requirements you, you had at the time for taking a job? Uh, yeah, I mean, actually Eurofloris had all the ticks in the box except for being in Malmö. Okay. Uh, and uh, having said that, I'm, I'm born in Malmö, so, so I don't have a problem with Malmö per se, but I have mm -hmm. a family in Stockholm, so, so that, that's an implication. Uh, but I wanted a product that is kind of everyone loves, likes, mm -hmm. in, in, in difference with directories, printed directories. It's not the hottest product. Uh, I want a company with challenges, with the young culture, a culture of change, and especially a company where in, in the middle of some kind of transformation, extremely reliant on, on the old bricks and mortars business, mm -hmm. but moving into online, because that's what I've been doing for the last like 20 years mm -hmm. in transformation in, in, in different places. So, so transformation was important. And then I also wanted owners uh, setting the agenda and me agreeing on that agenda. So having owners, not, not like being on the stock market where you have like, they, 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 they shift every day. Yeah. I want owners with a strategy and a, and a long vision. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Ben. The stage is yours. Ah, thank you. Hello, everybody. Really nice to be here. Um, I'm not a hockey player. I'm a bandy player, but it's ice under here, so I feel a bit comfortable with this. I'm going to just start this presentation with uh, introducing myself. So, my life in 20 seconds. And it's not getting more uh, exciting than that. And actually, if you don't believe me, ask my wife. She said I could have it easily. Uh, but now we're going to talk about this. No, we're not, we're not going to talk about this. We're not going to talk about me. And we're going to talk some of this. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm helping you, making your friends, families, and loved ones happy, noticed, and remembered by sending flowers. We send approximately 2 million orders a year. So we make two million people happy. That's our why. That's why we exist as a company. And half of this is still normal retailing. People walking into a florist shop, member of ours, and ask to send flowers. And the other half is pure online. And as an online business, this is one of the most coolest online business you can think. And, and you don't really consider flowers being the coolest online you could. But from a management point of view and from an owner point of view, I can state three things. First of all, we get paid in advance. So we have a negative working capital. We have a cash conversion of almost one. It's not that many e-commerce companies having that today. Second of all, no inventory at all. We don't stock anything. And you know what the best of everything is? New returns. You never give back flowers you got. So it's a fantastic online business. And we have been doing this since 1995. And this is pretty cool because 1995, us and Interflora, our reverse competitors, was actually two of the first 100 e-commerce sites up and running on the globe. So we were up there with the Boo.coms and the Let's Buy It and all the pioneers. We were even there between eBay and Amazon. They've been growing a bit faster than we have, I have to admit that. But, but still, so we know what we're talking about. We've done this. 
And at that point, and at some point, and I, I know that most of you are into e-commerce in a, uh, deep, so to speak. But there are some of you most likely sitting here thinking, why should we do this? And, and then you have to ask yourself a question. You have to be a bit philosophical sometimes. And I'm going to be that during this presentation, there are going to be some questions that I have answered in, in pre previous jobs and in this jobs, etc., etc. And one of the most important questions is, why? Why e-commerce? Because it's sexy? No. Because it's cool? No. Ah, because I can sell a lot of shitty products I can't sell in my stores. No. It doesn't save bad business. It doesn't. I'm afraid it doesn't. So that's a no there also. So why e-commerce? Why are we sitting here today? Why, why, what is e-commerce actually about? Why e-commerce? Well, it's a pretty simple question from my point of view. It's where the customers are. And this, is a, and this is quite frightening because there's a lot of people not understanding this still. We talk in 2014. I meet people, I meet managing directors, I meet peers and I meet colleagues telling me, wow, you know, this couldn't you come to us and talk about e-commerce? And they don't know why to do it. Well, it's pretty simple. 7% of all purchases start online, so that's where your customer is. And e-commerce is nothing than that. So what is e-commerce? Actually, what, what is it? What, what, what is it that you are doing? What is it that we are doing every day? Well, this is a channel. E-commerce is nothing but a channel. And too many people tend to forget this. We have a lot of different channels. This is one. We have 9,000 shops, we have 9,000 members, we have hundreds of thousands, we have millions of people passing these shops every year. So that's a channel. It's an extremely important channel for us, but it's still a channel. It's nothing more than that. This is another channel. We do like 10 million visits a year on our 34 sites in 12 languages. That's a channel. It's nothing no more than a channel. It's not a sexy thing, it's not a cool thing, it's not the place where you sell bad products. It's a channel for the products you have. And been doing this in 1995, we have made some learnings. And learning number one, from my point of view, being on the CEO level of, of companies like this, is that this is not rocket science in any way. It actually boils down to two things from my point of view. The first one is traffic. It's getting people into the shop. You sitting out there only doing retail, not doing e-retail, you recognize this. It's about getting people into the shop. And when they are in the shop, we want them to buy something. Online we call that conversion. These are basically the two things you are about to do with your e-commerce sites. It's not more difficult than that. Get people to your site, convert them into buyers. I've seen so many presentations, I've listened to so many business proposals making this much more difficult than it is. This is straightforward but rather simple. Traffic, conversion. It's like any other channel, it's like any other shop. Uh, and I'm talking about conversion. We have a conversion rate of 15%. Is that good? Yeah, you don't have to reveal your conversion rates, but is this good? Yeah, when I ask my online manager, they say this is fantastic. You know what I'm saying? No. 85 are still leaving. And that's a super duper important lesson to learn. Most of the people in this industry are counting the people buying when you actually should focus on the people leaving. We know that those who are buying, yeah, they like the products, they like the promos, they're okay with the prices. They 
trigger on the colors on the buttons. They like, they like the tonality we have on the site. They, like, they, they agree on the look and feel and things like this. But they bought. Wow, lucky us. Good, 15% conversion rate, and we are so good. Well, I still ask them, the other 85, where are they? Why did they leave? Why didn't they shop? That's a question. That's, so that's basically learning number two in this case. And this is the beauty with being online. This is the real, real, real beauty with being online. You can test this. You see, that's something I think is important should be put in three different colors so you get the picture. Good. Uh, this is the big difference from my point of view. And I'm simplifying things, absolutely. But from my point of view, this is the big difference. And this is the big advantage that all of you really should grasp. And that is testing, testing, testing. And I know, I speak to a lot of companies and they say, well, we're pretty good at this. We tested like 25 things last year. 25 things? You should test 25 things a week. You could do like three, 400 tests a year. If you have the ability of having a shop that you can differ from every customer coming into the shop, use that ability. That's learning number two. The more we test, the more we convert. So 15%, once again, that's not good. We have to test why the other 85 is leaving. And it's also simple mathematics behind this. 1% increase in conversion rate for our business is 10% growth. For already paid traffic. So it's zero, it's zip cost growth, basically. OK. Then it comes to learning number three into this. And once again, back to being a bit more philosophical into this. And this is a learning that's extremely important for me in my management and in my leadership. And that is to tell my online department, doing a million orders, half a billion in revenue, 15% conversion rate, uh, eating, sleeping, dreaming, e-commerce. And that is to tell them that we are not e-retailers. Perhaps you shouldn't say that in a place like this, but we are not e-retailers. And when, when I see this among my, I have a fantastic team. It, it, the online director, Laszlo Varga, he might be here, or he might have left back to Amsterdam. Uh, he has a fantastic team. But when I see them seeing themselves as e-retailers, I get a bit frustrated with them. Because this is what we are doing. The reason why we exist is not to make these cool websites or to do these great SEM campaigns. No, we exist to help our customers, you, make your friends, families, loved ones, and colleagues happy, noticed, and remembered. And to make life easier and more profitable for our members. And this is quite cool, because when I came to this company, I asked them, why do we exist? And this is, this is, a, this is a management question that all of you managing companies, you should ask your staff this question once in a while. Why do we exist? And you know what some of the, the employees told me? Well, to make money to the owners. And that kind of took the energy out of me. It's like, ah, come on. No, we don't exist to make money. You can't have a business idea being we should make more money. That's one, probably one of the most stupid reasons you can have to start a company. Because the only need you're fulfilling there is your own. And if your own need is the first priority, then that business will never, ever fly. This is our why. If we do this correctly, we will make money. If we do this better than our peers, we will grow. 
if we do this better than anyone else, we will be the largest flower delivery company in Europe. And then we will make a lot of money. So, once again, we are not e-retailers. We are a flower gift company. Never forget that. Even the day we have 100% of the orders coming online, and that will happen, 10 or 90% at least. In 10 years' time, 90% of all our orders will be online. But we are still a flower gift company. Happens to be awesome on e-commerce, e absolutely. Okay, this question, I shouldn't ask this 2014, but Sarah asked me to ask this question because she gets it from time to time, and I still don't believe her. Do I need e-commerce? Well, actually, I can only answer that question with another question. And remember, I did a presentation a couple of weeks ago, and I could bet on the fact that it should rain this day. So, so yes, it rains in Malmö. Yes, you need to do e-commerce. If you're in a company not doing e-commerce, well, you're kind of a bit lost here. But still, once again, it's nothing more than a channel. Channel, channel, and channel. Uh, this is not as much leadership as, as uh, entrepreneurship. And, and I know that uh, in Stockholm there was a lot of entrepreneurs, and hopefully there are some entrepreneurs here as well. You guys are the, are the kind of thing that they get this wheel spinning. Uh, it's the entrepreneurs that build this country, so I hope there are some. And when speaking and talking to entrepreneurs, question number one in the beginning, or at some point, is always about financing. And I met so many entrepreneurs, and I've listened to so many business proposals, etc., etc., etc. And I have one thing to give, and that is that money, and especially more money, is not always the, the solution. When you start asking your owners for more money, that's the first time when you admit you have a problem. Yes, you need to do early investments. You need to build the system. You need to buy the, the inventory. You need to do the first campaigns, etc., etc. Yes, no one can be cash positive from day one. But when it's not flying, it's not flying. And it's not always more money that is the solution to the problems. But when you ask an entrepreneur, he will always say, if I only had more money, I could do this and this and this. And, and that comes into the next thing, and that is, that is profitability. If there is something one should focus on, not only being a CEO of a, of a multi-large company, or a decent large company, or a small company, that is profit. Profit, profit, and profit. And you know why? Well, first of all, because it's more fun to be profitable. It gives you a, a sense of doing something good. So it's more fun to be profitable. I know there's a lot of companies out there really, really focusing on growing, 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 growing. On behalf of profit. I'm not sure that's the right way to do it all the time. Or actually, any time. Because, and this is important, when you start a company, what you do the first years is actually creating the DNA of that company. The culture you set the first couple of three to four, perhaps five years, that's going to be the DNA of your company. And if that DNA is asking your owners for more money as soon as you run out of, run out of, of cash, that's going to be the way that this organization is built for years. Yes, you eventually will be profitable, but that will be to a more expensive company. It will be uh, with higher traveling costs. It will be with higher office costs, etc., etc., etc. While a company starting 
counting their money from day one, that will be a profitable company all time. IKEA is a fantastic example. And I used to ask or tell entrepreneurs willing to listen to me, you should be tighter than Ingvar Kamprad. Because you will have so much of that later on in, in, in when this company takes off. And the company takes off because you have good products, or you have a good tonality, you have a good marketing campaign. Not because you have more money. I am not a true believer of Zalando. I am not a true believer of buying a customer for 700 krona and selling them a pair of shoes for 200 krona that they return in half of the times. I'm not a true believer of that. I'm a true believer of actually building companies bottom up and starting to make money. Growth is nothing but the proof of how much your customer likes your products. Yes, you can dupe your growth, no problems at all. Do some more Google campaigns, bring some more bad traffic, convert them half good. Yeah, look at this, we made some more, we're growing revenue. That's duped. If the customer likes your products, they find your site attractive, they will buy. Good. So if growth is the, is the measurement of, of how liked we are, well, then the result is the proof of how good you run your business. I'm going to take an example. I'm in the board of Vera and John. Vera and John is one of the casino companies in Sweden. Uh, it's really successful. It's been growing like crazy. It's profitable like hell. Did we have this discussion in the beginning? Yes. Did they regret to choose me as, as chairman of the board? Yes. They just said, some more money. We need some more money. Could we have some more money? And we said, no. No, no, no. But you can take whatever krona you're making and spend it on marketing. I don't care. You can, you can spend it on whatever you want. What, every single krona except the last one. Today, they are number two or number three on the Swedish market. I uh, think the, the profit this year will be something around uh, 8 million euros. This was five years ago. And they, I know this. They are one of the, f one of the casino or, or gaming companies in Sweden with the lowest cost base. They were forced to t think a bit smarter. They were forced to think a bit differently. They were forced to buy the marketing a bit cheaper and a bit more clever than everyone else. Did they hate me? Yes, they did. Are they taking the credit for it right now? Yes, they are, and of course they should. It's a fantastic bunch of guys. Uh, they are really, really good, so, so of course. I mean, and that's why. They had a good product, they had a good system, uh, they had a good tonality on, on, on the site. There are the crowds of casino sites out there. They, break, they, they made it because they, they believe in the product. They were not spending as much on marketing as anyone else, but they had a better product. And they've been profitable from day one. That's pretty cool. About managing e-commerce. From, from, from my point of view, being kind of the CEO on, on, in companies for the last 25 years, uh, for me this is pretty simple. E-commerce is business critical. E-commerce is a board question. I still meet companies, and I hope I don't meet any out there because I'm going to punch you in the nose if that's the case, having put online under IT. Have you heard anything that stupid? I mean, Online is, uh, sorry, IT, I, no, no offense, IT, they're good people, but they are not the most commercial people we have in the company. If any of you have put online or your e-commerce under IT, please rethink and definitely don't tell me. It has nothing to do with IT. Nothing. It's a commercial channel for your customers to find your products. Don't put it under IT. Put it in the management group. 
output on top level. Yes, it might be a tiny business today, but I can assure you, the majority of your customers are looking for you out there. So you should really, 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 really put that on the board level, on the CEO level, on the management group level. You have to. So business critical, it is. Not to do, from my point of view. I don't have a clue, but to understand. And that's the beauty with being a manager. manager. You don't have to have a clue about really anything but leading and understanding how these things are connected. If they put me doing the CPU in a week, traffic would go down. If they put me in charge of the, of the sites, conversion would go down. I don't have a clue. I'm totally worthless of these things. But I understand the importance of doing the right things. I understand the importance of having the right people here. I understand the importance of telling them, all the managers in my management team, I tell them, the impo I tell them that you shouldn't work more than four hours a day. And with work, I mean meetings, emails, tedious phone calls, uh, writing reports to me, etc., etc. That you should handle the first from 8 to 12. Because do you know what happens when you give talented people, Lutherans as we are, time over? These people don't start surfing the web, looking for new cars or doing the Facebook updates. They start to think. They start to create things. So, so, so this is also, and this is perhaps what inspired them the last time, <laughs> to do this. You have to be able to delegate. To do this, you have to have really talented people working with you. And I don't mind that, because what happens when you have all this time over, you start to think, you start to talk to customers, you start to realize that, wow, that product is out of date, we have to do something, and oh, perhaps we should change the organization in this way. And you start browsing competitor sites. Things that you can't do when your schedule is booked from 8 to 9. And in between, you should do these emails, you should do some phone calls, you should pick up the kids and take them to practice, etc., etc. You can't do that. It's impossible. You will only be focused on the next uh, problem to solve and the next problem to solve. Make yourself room. Hire an assistant. Delegate, whatever. Make sure that you have time to spend on the future. Okay, red alert, time is up. Uh, to summarize, e-commerce is a must 2014. I think that is like kicking in open doors for you guys. E-commerce is a CEO topic. Once again, if I meet any one of you out there telling me that, well, I have it under IT and I like it, I'm going to punch you on the nose. So that's not good. So please, move it or don't tell me. Uh, e-commerce is not rocket science. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Traffic, get them into the store, make them buy. Well, yeah, of course, there's a lot of tricks of trades in doing that. But from my point of view, it's one of the most simple business I can find. Get people to the store and get them to buy. How hard can it be? And perhaps most important of all, you're late. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you are not e-retailers. Even though you're sitting here on the e-commerce e e e conference and you've been talking about this and this and this for, for two days, you are whatever. Education, food, sport, gaming, fashion, music, shoe retailers, I don't know. But never forget that. And then you should absolutely try to be awesome on e-commerce. And with that, thank you. Good job. So, quick question. As a leader in your company, you have to make a lot of decisions. Yes. Obviously, everyone here does, that's a leader. Yep. So how do you balance the figures and the facts with your gut? Ah, that's a good one. Uh, the thing is, the older you get, uh, the better your gut feeling is. And, and that's probably some science behind that, because, and it's most likely called wisdom. Because 
it's ex experiences ends up there. Uh, but on the other side, the older I get, the more I understand the importance of data. Uh, so I, if you asked me this like 10 years ago, I would say gut, because I have a great gut feeling. Today I would say data. Okay. I back up everything with data. This testing we're talking about, we're doing a lot of tests. And, and of course, you could test on gut feeling. I could have a feeling that that should be pink instead of... of no. Sorry, yes, but, but you're not allowed. Mm. We have backed this with data. No one is dropping out on this page, but everyone is dropping out on this page. This is the page we're going to test. So yes, mm. data, data, data. And that's the beauty with today's society. We have so much data. Mm -hmm. So I would do data and facts, okay. actually. Mm. Even though I have a pretty good gut feeling, I think. Question? Do we have any questions uh, tw on Twitter? Twitter, uh, one of the questions is, you talked shortly about high, uh, good people. Uh, how do you find good people hiring? Mm, that's extremely difficult. Uh, I when, when, and, and I have a reputation of, of changing management teams when I come to a company, so don't hire me. <laughs> and and, I, and yes, I do, because I think it's, I mean, you need to, do, to take the next step and, and, and things like that. And looking back at the last three or four positions I've had, 80% of these are coming internally. There are so much talent internally. And just give them the opportunity to, to bloom, to, to learn new things, and, and be there to, to inspire them and, and tell them that it's okay to, to learn this and, and to take new steps. So actually, I try to find them internally. Externally, networks, uh, there's a lot of good headhunters out there, etc., etc. But then you increase the risk with factor three to four. That person, Lisa or Peter, you know them. You knew the capabilities, you knew how they are, you knew how they, what they function, what they turn, what, I mean everything. And you just try them in this position. So I would say always look internally first, for a lot of reasons. Yeah. So I have another question for you. Yes. Actually, I'll be asking this on behalf of Sara <laughs> because she's, she doesn't have the courage to ask you from what happened with Mikel Orlando yesterday. <laughs> she asked him for an interview. Uh, so my question is, do you think Sara has what it takes to be in your company. What what are you what are you looking for when you're hiring somebody? Oh yeah, ah, Sara, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> no, um, um, I mean, first of all, I start with your your resume will be will tell a true story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. And and then I will have someone test your mental capabilities, like. You know, some kind of mental shock. Yeah, kind of sure. <laughs> no, but I don't. And and this is not. I mean, we're not talking intelligence in, in doing intelligence tests and things like that, but actually you have to have the ability to grasp things, to mm -hmm. understand things. And whether you're educated or not, whether you have a degree or not, it's totally irrelevant in, in this case. And then it comes down to who you are. Mm -hmm. And I always try to look for people with a life. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I speak to a lot of, I'm going to be on a, later tonight and having a, a speech for, for young managers. And, and one of the things that I tell them is get alive. Uh, because people only focusing on work and being at work around the clock start to lose something after mm -hmm. a while. And there are extremely few companies having their own employees as the only customers. So you have to be out in society, you have to be in singing in the chorus or training the <laughs> football team or doing the dance or swimming or whatever. So having a life is for me extremely important because that also means that if you made this career, you still have a life, then you're efficient. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend like 12 hours to do this presentation, you do it on four. Mm -hmm. So you can get a life. So, so, so that is the, actually one of the key things. And so if Sara has a life, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean p some kind of passion outside your work? Yeah, and that could be family, that could be traveling, mm -hmm. or that could be, but, but something that occupies your mind from time to time. Mm -hmm. and, and that gets you new influences, mm -hmm. meeting new people. Mm -hmm. And, and because the customers, the people sense flowers are out there. Mm -hmm. And there where you get the feedback. That they, these are the guys telling you, well, that wasn't the best book here I've seen in my life. Because they're friends with you, they know you, they can say these things. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's important for me. Yes, but you have to leave for a meeting. Yes, yes. I have. I'm going to drive. Thank you so very much for yeah. being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It was fantastic. Thank you.